Hey guys, welcome to Coding After 30. In this video, I want to talk about what should you have as a project in your portfolio to guarantee that you're going to get hired on your next interview. The truth is not every project is created equally. So if you're looking to get the job as a web developer, you have to ask yourself, is your portfolio solid enough to show potential employers that you know what you're doing? And are you able to talk about your code that gives them confidence that you're the right person for the job? And by the way, if you have done some tutorials from Udemy or other tutorials courses that you took, by all means, put them in your portfolio for now. But your goal should be to have one corner stone project that you build yourself from scratch at the end of the day if you can't build something from scratch you're not going to get a job one of the things that we often hear is that there's not enough junior web development jobs and the truth is there are the people that say that are the people whose portfolio unfortunately is not good enough to have them land those jobs and I know this from firsthand because my first initial projects weren't just good enough so let's talk about in this video what I think you guys need to do to help you get that job by the way my name is Paul and on this channel I talk about the steps that I took that will help you get hired when switching careers into web development if this is something that interests you consider subscribing Getting hired as a web developer is really hard. Not only do you have to have a good resume, an excellent portfolio, know how to code, which is very important because that's what you're trying to get hired. There's bajillion other things that you have to keep in mind. But when it comes at the end of the day, can you do the work? Meaning, are you able to build something from scratch by yourself? And if the answer is no, you're probably not ready for your first job. And by the way, when I say build something from scratch, I don't mean without any aid from Google or Stack Overflow. We all have to do that. But you should have the confidence to know where to start. And if you get stuck, you should be able to look that stuff up without using a tutorial as a crotch so if you're not there yet and you're not able to do that it doesn't mean that you'll never be able to do it it just means that you have to keep working through building things on your own so before talking about the portfolio the main takeaway here is that if you're following tutorials to learn to code you could spend hundred years continuously doing tutorials and still not be able to get hired because the tutorials they teach you how to code but the most important thing that they don't teach you is how to think for yourself how to problem solve for yourself and how to come up with a project idea by yourself the only way you could do that is by turning off the tutorials and try to build something yourself from scratch and that's okay if you get stuck it's okay if you fail but that's the way you should learn it's going to teach you the most important part how to do those things yourself because at the end of the day when you have your job at my current job I am responsible for my own work and I can't rely on other people's tutorial ideas to help me accomplish the thing that I'm working on. When we first start out, we make a lot of simple projects for our portfolio. We might have a quote generator, a tic-tac-toe game, or we might have just a basic mock-up of an HTML and CSS site. And the truth is, it's not enough. As a front-end developer, you shouldn't just know how to mock up a website. You should also be able to add functionality. You should also be able to work with an API. You should understand what CRUD is. You should understand what authentication is, how to have an authenticate user, and those users have access to certain things. You have to know all those things. You have to understand what a database is. You don't have to make a lot of that from scratch, but you should know how to implement it and how to combine everything together to work with it. So if you do have a basic, simple website, Site, which is just a HTML site or some weather app it is just not enough you should have a more complex app and a blog would be where I draw the line because the blog is interesting because not only do you need to have the front end to show the blogs but you should also have a back end where as a user you're able to log in and you're able to write that blog that will then 
be displayed on the front end of your application. And in order to have a block site, you need to understand how to work with an API, how to use CRUD to create, read, update, and delete your post and be able to at least handle that in the front end. And you also have to understand this idea of I'm a logged in user, I should be the only one who should be able to write a blog. So that is a lot. But that's what people want to see. They want to see that you understand the whole big picture of a whole app and you're able to implement it and do it. So what I tell people, it's okay to have smaller projects. It's okay to have stuff in your portfolio, but we should all be working on one cornerstone project that could take us anywhere from a month to three months to build. And that's the level of complexity that I'm talking about. So if you're still not getting hired, it could just be the fact that your applications that you have in your portfolio are not complex enough. And when people see your portfolio, they just don't feel confident enough of hiring you for the role that they have. The most important thing as you build your projects, keep putting them in your portfolio, but every time aim to build a more complex projects. So here's what I recommend. And before I used to recommend you need three to five projects. Now I recommend you should have three projects in your portfolio and one main big project, which is your cornerstone project. And I would argue if you have a great cornerstone project, you could just have that one project in your portfolio. So this is what it should do. Number one, you should have this ability to store data, meaning you should be able to log in as a user, you should be able to add data on your website's backend and it should be stored in a database. Number two, you should understand this idea of authenticated user, meaning if a user is authenticated, they could only see their and add it and delete and update their content that they're responsible for. So if you have other users on the website, they're not able to see and edit your content. They only are able to do those things to the content that they've wrote. That's very important. Number three, you need to understand the idea of being able to work with a backend or an API. Now, I'm not saying that you have to create your own backend from scratch. You could use things like Strapi, and this is what I recommend. Strapi allows you to create a backend that you could quickly implement in the front end of your application, and it will allow you to write those websites with authentication, having the CRUD capability of creating, reading, updating, deleting things, and also allowing you to have multiple users. So you see that your app does have to have some level of complexity. The most important part here, and this is why I say writing a blog website, it's still probably the bare minimum you should do because that itself still doesn't showcase your ability to handle some more advanced logic with React if that's what you're working on. So even a blog, in my opinion, is still not your best cornerstone project. It's a good start in the right direction. So here's what I recommend. And by the way, to help you, I started a whole new live stream on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. where I talk about creating this cornerstone project and we're building one together. So if you wanna get some ideas or just see what I'm doing, you could join me every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Central Time. If you're looking to build a complex application, here are the three projects I recommend. Number one, you could build a bug tracker. It is something that tracks bugs. I'm sure you've seen bug trackers. Every company uses some version of a bug tracker and it's not a simple app because not only do you have this idea of users. You have this idea of bugs and which bugs assigned to which user and which project has which bugs and you're able to write notes for your bugs. You're able to mark them completed or pending. There's a varied amount of logic that is responsible. You could run reports where you showcase via graphs, you know, which bugs are outstanding, which bugs you completed. As you could see, and you could find lots of different examples online of a bug tracker, but you could see by me just describing it, the complexity that it has. And this is why I say this type of project may take you a month or two or even three months to complete, depending how many hours a week you are able to spend on it. The second thing, and this is what I'm working on, is I'm working on a project management app, which is similar to a bug tracker, just more general. You're able to track your clients, you're able to track the projects that each client has, and for each project, you're able to track 
like the tasks, you're able to leave notes, and you have this concept of users where if you belong to my project, you're gonna see the things that I see. And somebody else could not belong to my project they'll have their own project. And because we do not on the same team, I'm not able to see their project. So this idea of security and authentication is very important. On top of it, not only are you doing create, read, update, and delete by creating a project, you're also building a relationship between projects, clients, and tasks. So I could see this is a pretty complex application with a lot of moving parts. And once you're able to complete an application like this, you definitely will feel the confidence that will show other employers that you know what you're doing. And if you're able to build it from scratch without any doubt in my mind, you're going to get that job. That's kind of my whole thought process now. It's don't just build a bunch of random stuff if you already have have it. And I'm not saying don't work on smaller projects. I'm just saying you need to have one cornerstone project that blows everything out of the water. Like if you show that project to your friend, they're not going to think you made it. They're going to think it's a production ready app somebody else made. The litmus test that I tell people the project that you created would you yourself pay money for that service and if the answer is no if you wouldn't pay money for that project then nobody else would at the end of the day you need to produce something that is production ready and the better it is the more confidence someone who's looking to employ you will have in your ability. So if you don't have a college degree, you better have this amazing portfolio piece. And the third thing you could build, you could build an e-commerce store, but not just something that shows the products that you could add to your cart and pretend to buy, but it should have a back end where you could add those products to the store. And again, you don't have to create a back end from scratch. Something like Strappy would be a perfect fit for you. And so with that being said, I know it sounds like there's so much stuff that you have to know, so much stuff that you have to build, but that's the reality of being a developer is that you actually do have to know those things and you do have to demonstrate that you know what you are doing. I'm sure there's many different opinions. I'm sure somebody else will tell you otherwise. But in my case, all my prior projects that have not been complex enough were just not getting me jobs. And so this is where I tell you, don't stop what you're doing, but have a plan to have one big, massive, cornerstone project that when you build it's going to take you a month to three months to do yes it's a long time but when someone sees it and then they see you talking about how you went and build it talk hearing you talk about the code how you solve certain problems the technologies you use could be you know react on the front end strapping on the back end use graphql to query data and everything was using postgresql as the database and for authentication did this this and that we use a jw token now like you sound like a real developer and yes, if you're getting frustrated right now and being like, that's too much, I can't do this, you don't have to listen to me, you don't have to take my opinion is just something that worked for me and I'm telling you this right now can you get a job without having a project of this caliber yes is it going to be easy no and I'm sure there's going to be some luck involved if you are stuck and you're not getting jobs and you're thinking there it's because there's no junior job uh, available no it's because you haven't demonstrated enough skill to give the person who's hiring you the fact that you have the ability to do the work that they're gonna pay you for. So if you're not getting jobs, definitely check your resume the way it is written. And the truth is, if your resume is poorly written, like I had before, you're gonna get zero people looking or giving you a chance. And most importantly, number two, you have to have a most phenomenal portfolio. You can't to stand out. You can't just be like everybody else. You have to stand out. So if you don't have a college degree, that's what you have to do. So if you're not getting jobs and you're frustrated and you're just not sure what to do, you just need to raise the complexity of your project. And you know, when I started, my project sucked, sucked, sucked. Then they started getting a little bit better, 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 but still sucked. Now they're getting more complex, more complex. And now they're getting to a point where somebody who will see my project and see how I'm coding it, they'll be like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. He's ready for this junior role or mid-junior role, whatever it is. So I know 
frustrating. I get it. But at the end of the day, this is not an easy field. I don't care who you listen to. It's freaking hard. It takes a lot of work, a lot of effort. So if you're serious about it, this is the work you have to do. And like I mentioned before, outside of my other Saturday stream that we have lots of fun at 6 p.m. Central Time, I have a dedicated stream Tuesdays, 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time, where we're talking about that Cornerstone project. And we're building exactly that. We're building a project management system. So if this is something that you think you'll be interested in, definitely watch the live stream. But with that being said, thanks again for watching this video. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys got the value. And look, by me not telling you the truth, it doesn't serve me at all. So I'm not sure to be honest with you, tell you how things are. And if you've done it a different way and it worked better for you, definitely let us know in the comments. But I love all of you guys. Thank you for your support of this channel. This channel would not exist if you guys did not exist. So I'm very proud to be part of this community. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you guys next time. And obviously, if you like the video, like the video. If you want to subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the channel. If you don't want to do any of those things, it's a free country. I appreciate you guys anyway. And I'll see you guys next time.